December 2nd, 2015, dawned like any other day in San Bernardino, California. But the peace was shattered when Syed Rizwan Farouk and Tashfeen Malik stormed a holiday party, unleashing a torrent of bullets. 14 innocent lives were tragically cut short, leaving the city reeling in shock and grief. The FBI homed in on a crucial piece of evidence, Farouk's iPhone 5C. This device held the potential to unlock the secrets of the attack, but accessing its encrypted contents was a challenge. The iPhone had become a locked vault at the heart of a national tragedy. The encryption protecting Farouk's phone was no ordinary lock. For the FBI, this presented a daunting obstacle. They believed the phone could contain vital clues about the attack. The clock was ticking. The stage was set for a legal showdown between personal privacy and national security. The FBI's demand was simple. Apple should help them unlock Farouk's phone. Apple, however, pushed back. They argued that creating a backdoor to bypass the iPhone's encryption would set a dangerous precedent. It would undermine the very foundation of digital security for millions of users worldwide. The tech giant held firm, unwilling to compromise the privacy of its customers, even in the face of immense pressure from the U.S. government. We believe it would be in the best interest of our customers to stand firm on this issue. The ensuing legal battle captivated the nation and reverberated around the world. It was a clash of titans, the world's most powerful tech company versus the might of the U.S. government. At the heart of the dispute lay a fundamental question, how do we balance the need for national security with the right to privacy in the digital age? As the legal battle raged, the FBI was quietly pursuing another avenue hacking the iPhone. They sought a way to circumvent the encryption without Apple's help, a technical feat that many experts deemed impossible. But deep within the corridors of the Bureau, a glimmer of hope emerged from an unexpected source, a small Australian cybersecurity firm named Azimuth Security. We at Azimuth were known for our ability to find and exploit vulnerabilities in even the most secure systems. We discovered a critical flaw in the iPhone software, a chink in the armor of Apple's seemingly impenetrable fortress. This flaw, a vulnerability in the iPhone's image processing software, provided a narrow pathway into the device's tightly guarded operating system. This was the breakthrough the FBI had been waiting for. With Azimuth's help, they might be able to access the iPhone's data without Apple's assistance, unlocking the secrets hidden within the device. The stakes were high and the pressure was immense. The fate of the investigation and perhaps the future of digital privacy rested on the shoulders of Azimuth's hackers. The task facing Azimuth was daunting. We had to craft a bespoke exploit, a piece of malicious code tailored to exploit the specific vulnerability we had discovered. This exploit, like a digital skeleton key, would grant us access to the iPhone's inner workings, bypassing the encryption that protected its data. But the process was fraught with risk. One wrong move, one line of code out of place, could render the phone permanently inaccessible taking any potential evidence with it. Working tirelessly, Azimuth's hackers toiled in secrecy, their every keystroke a step closer to breaching the iPhone's defenses. The exploit they were crafting was a testament to their ingenuity, a delicate dance between technical prowess and the art of digital deception. It was a high-stakes game of cat and mouse, with the FBI and Azimuth pitted against Apple's formidable security measures. The exploit relied on a chain of vulnerabilities, each one a link in a fragile chain. It targeted the iPhone's image processor, a chip designed to handle photos and videos. By exploiting a flaw in this chip, Azimuth could inject their own code into the phone's memory, effectively hijacking the device. This code would then disable the security mechanisms that prevented brute force attacks, allowing the FBI to try thousands of passcode combinations until they found the right one. Section 5. A Hollow Victory After weeks of intense work, Azimuth delivered the exploit to the FBI. The Bureau wasted no time in deploying it, anxiously awaiting the outcome. The moment of truth arrived, the exploit worked. The FBI had successfully bypassed the iPhone's encryption, gaining access to its trove of data. The locked vault had been pried open. But what they found inside left them both surprised and deflated. Contrary to their expectations, the phone contained no smoking gun, no direct links to terrorist organizations, no grand revelations about the attack. It seemed that Farouk had not used the phone for any terrorist-related activities in the weeks leading up to the shooting. 
The treasure trove of evidence they had fought so hard to access turned out to be a digital desert. The victory, hard won and controversial, felt hollow. The FBI had succeeded in cracking the iPhone, setting a precedent for future cases and raising concerns about the future of encryption. Yet the tangible benefits of their success were debatable, leaving many to wonder if the ends justified the means. Section 6. Echoes of Encryption. The San Bernardino case, though seemingly resolved, sent shockwaves through the tech world and beyond. It reignited the debate about encryption, privacy, and the delicate balance between security and freedom in the digital age. Governments around the world, emboldened by the FBI's success, began demanding similar backdoors into encrypted devices. Tech companies, wary of the implications, pushed back, arguing that such measures would weaken security for everyone and make users more vulnerable to hackers and cyber criminals. The case became a touchstone for discussions about the limits of government power in the digital realm and the right to privacy in an increasingly interconnected world. The echoes of the San Bernardino case continue to resonate today as governments grapple with the challenges of encryption in an era of evolving threats. The debate is far from over, with no easy answers in sight. Section 7. The debate rages on. The fundamental questions raised by the San Bernardino case remain as relevant as ever. How much privacy are we willing to sacrifice in the name of security? Should governments have unfettered access to our digital lives? Can we find a way to protect both national security and individual privacy in the digital age? These questions are not merely theoretical. They have real-world implications. They shape the laws that govern our digital lives, the technologies we use, and the future of the Internet itself. The San Bernardino case serves as a stark reminder that the choices we make today will have far-reaching consequences for generations to come. The debate is often framed as a zero-sum game, a battle between two opposing forces. But perhaps there's a middle ground, a way to reconcile the needs of security with the sanctity of privacy. Finding that balance is one of the most pressing challenges of our time. Section 8. Striking a Delicate Balance the San Bernardino iPhone case highlighted the inherent tension between privacy and security. It demonstrated that even the most secure systems are not impenetrable, and that the tools we create to protect ourselves can be turned against us. It also underscored the need for a nuanced and informed public debate about the trade-offs we are willing to make in the digital age. There are no easy answers, no simple solutions, but by engaging in open and honest dialogue by working together to find common ground, we can strive to create a world where security and privacy can coexist. The future of our digital lives may depend on it.